Hi, I'm Todd Allen, Commercial AC Trainer for Zone Line Products and Air and Water Solutions. Today we're going to be working on one of our AZ9V inverter model variable speed, variable capacity units, vertical units. This one's make up air and that's what this uh, air channel here is for. Uh, but we're going to be replacing the main board and the inverter board on this unit. Let's get started. As you can see, I've already got it removed from the closet, but with our quick install system, part of which is our quick disconnect electrical and our quick dis disconnect thermostat, makes it very easy to unplug. And then with our uh, quick install platform system, makes it very easy to unlock and remove it from the closet. Uh, so to get started, we're gonna remove the uh, insulation package from our uh, dedicated makeup air channel. And we just simply slide the top piece up and slide the front piece forward. That's gonna give us access to some screws that we need to remove to remove this entire channel. So first we've gotta loosen this screw here, loosen a screw here. We've gotta remove one from the back on this side and then we've got one on the back on this side. With these two screws loosened and these two removed, we can take our makeup air. There's a damper and a fan assembly in here that delivers makeup air into the room. So we need to unplug the connectors for these two components on the side of this makeup air channel. So with those disconnected and these loosened, we can lift the entire makeup air system off of the unit. So with the makeup air channel removed, we're going to start removing the cover for our inverter board, which is located under here. Now first, it's important to remember this inverter board has high voltage DC to it, and it takes a while for the capacitors in this unit to discharge. So allow the unit 10 minutes to sit after turning power off and removing power before you start to unplug or work on any electrical components on this unit. Even on the main board, uh, away from the inverter board, unplugging connectors from the main board here could uh, discharge a capacitor and cause a failure of your main board or fan components. So make sure you allow this to discharge for your safety and uh, so you don't damage the product further. So with that, we're gonna remove these four screws. and remove our cover. So adequate time has passed for our capacitors to discharge. We've got four screws that secure the inverter board to the chassis. There's one here, one down in this area, one here, and one down in this area. There's also six connectors on, on this unit, this particular model, and there is a quick release plug on each plug so you can quickly disconnect each connector. They are unique connectors, so you can't get them reversed or in the wrong connection once you go back with the units. And with that, we've got all of our connectors disconnected and we'll remove our screws. And with all the screws removed, we can simply remove our inverter board. Add one more connector there. All the connectors removed, and you can see the board had taken a hit right here due to the, the voltage spike. So I've gotten our inverter board replacement out, and you may notice when you get a replacement board, it has different components, maybe even some different wiring connectors. It's not always something to be concerned about because these are universal boards that can be used on a wide range of different models. So in this case, uh, we've got a couple extra capacitors, but the wiring connections are the same. So we'll start plugging up our wiring connections. And this wiring harness here was for our makeup air fan and damper. They are completely separate since they were connected on both ends. We'll plug these connectors in. And we've got one more here to plug in. And then these wires are long enough to 
connect outside, but the others we're going to have to put the board in place or the inverter board in place to get the others connected. So we'll connect this one here and we'll get our last connector connected in here. With everything in place, we can go ahead and put our screws back in to secure the inverter board. To get access to the main board, we first need to remove this extension for our makeup air. This is where the makeup air is introduced prior to the coil, which makes it conditioned makeup air. There are four screws that hold this uh, adapter on. And so there's two that you have to remove down here at the bottom, and then there's two with keyhole slots up here at the top that you just need to loosen. So we will go ahead and remove the two lower screws and loosen the top screw. And then we can just lift the entire adapter assembly off of the unit. You can see these are the screws that we just had to loosen. Now we've already got our junction box cover removed because we had to take it loose to get the electrical connections undone to remove it from the closet. But if you were going to remove that, there's a screw here, a screw here, and then we've got one down here, and then you could remove the junction box cover. But with what we've got left, we've got a screw here, 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 and here. So we'll go ahead and remove these screws. And remove the cover to get access to our main board. So this is our main control board here. This is what takes in all the data from all of the sensors, makes decisions on what needs to be adjusted, and sends any needed signals to the inverter board here. To remove the main board, we just need to disconnect all of our wiring connectors. So we'll start with the Molex connectors first. And then these wires right here are for our heater circuit. It's very important that you do not get these wires reversed. If you do, it will disable the heating circuit. Most relays, it doesn't matter which terminal is on which because it's just an in and out. But this one actually powers the board in, in this point. So, or actually powers on, on this one right here. So we'll remove those, taking a good note of the location of each of those wires. So with that, I believe we've got all of our wires disconnected. We've just got two quarter inch screws here and here that secure it. So we remove those screws. And then we've got some push lock pins located about the board. So just squeeze those pins and release them. and we can take our main board completely out. Replacement main boards, again, are made universally to fit several different models. The replacement boards will have a set of dip switches that need to be configured for the specific model that you're installing the board on. Refer to the mini manual or the instructions that came with your board on how to configure these dip switches. So with this, we'll just align our board to these push pins. Lock those in place, and then we'll secure it with the screws. Then we can start connecting our connections. Sometimes they want to hide from you just a bit.
always make sure you get your ground wire back on. Make sure these terminals go to the correct pins. Make sure you note that before you remove them. So with that, I believe we've got all of our connections back on and I'm doing a check and I see I've got one that's hit out on me pretty good. With everything connected, we'll reinstall our main board cover. and install our makeup air adapter. Now we can go ahead and reinstall our inverter board cover. There is a channel back here for the wiring harness for the makeup air module and the fan to come through the back and then you just place the cover on top make sure your screw holes are lined up and then install the screws to secure it you may have noticed on the the video there's different types of screws these gray screws with a coarse type thread go into plastic any of the black screws go into sheet metal. So if you get a bunch of screws loose and you're not sure which goes where, that's a good indicator of which screw goes to which area. And we'll just take up our makeup air channel here, slide it in place, make sure we get the front screws in the keyhole slots. And there we go. And then we'll make sure that the back screws line up where they need to in the back. And we'll just secure it in place. Now that we've got everything secure, we'll connect our wiring harnesses for our makeup air module assembly. And make sure our wires are looped through the restrainer here. Take our insulation, place it back on the unit, making sure we tuck the wires and connectors up in place. And then slide on the front piece. The piece with the, the slots in the top goes towards the top. Now that we've got all the components installed and ready to go, now we can start to reinstall our unit. Okay, with the boards installed, I've used a hand truck to get my unit onto the platform, part of our quick install system. It's gonna keep it perfectly centered. And as you can see, we've got a surface mount gasket right here. All I'm gonna do is simply push this unit back into place. It will drop and lock into place, holding it and creating a perfect seal between the gasket and the back of the unit. So that's all it took. Just a little bit of resistance to compress this gasket here, and we've got a good seal. Everything's done as far as that. Now our electrical connection, I mentioned our quick install electrical system. So I've already got my uh, power connection wired up to the wiring for the, the property. And this one is a 20 amp connector, so it has a personality plug with two wires. So I'm simply going to plug in my 220 volts and my personality plug here. And then all I need to do is just slide this into the chassis and then secure it with a screw. There's just one screw to secure it right here. And since I've got that secured, I can go ahead and install my junction box cover. Okay, I've got my junction box cover here and there's three screws that secure it. One here, one here, and then one down at the bottom. It's actually down here behind uh, this adapter.
Okay, so that's all it took to get our electrical connected. Very quick, very simple. And since we have the quick connect thermostat connector as well, I didn't have to undo any wires to disconnect my thermostat. So there's no possibility that I'm gonna get wires reversed or mixed up and have a problem or an issue when I go to start this up. I'm simply going to take my thermostat connector and plug it into the unit uh, and that's it. So I, now I've got my thermostat connected and I've got my electrical connected. So very, very quick with a quick install system. So I've removed lockout tag out and I've restored power to the unit. Anytime you replace the main board, you're gonna get a P1 pop up in the display. What that means is you need to set the unit to the revision, engineering revision of the unit. In this case, the last two characters of my model number are an H1, one indicating it's revision one. It's already at a revision one. If I wanted to change it, I could simply use the plus and minus buttons to increase or decrease the number to match my model number. In this case, it's already set, so all I need to do is press the auxiliary button and accept that revision number. While this is powering up, I can hear some clicking in the background. What it's doing is going through a startup process to make sure all the system components are working properly. And what I really hear is the click, 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 click. Those are the stepper motors on the electronic expansion valves opening and closing that valve to make sure it will go to a full open and then a home position. So with that, I'm going to go ahead and just power it up. I'm going to hit mode. Seems like everything's working fine. So I'm simply going to press mode on my unit here and put it in cooling mode. So my unit has started up, the fans have come on and it looks like everything's fine. We repaired the unit. All we need to do is install a new filter here and I can't stress how important it is to keep a clean filter on these units to help it cut, uh, running in top performance and making the unit last a lot longer than just letting things go. So we'll install the filter and we'll put this unit back in service.